All right, here we go. We're going to add and subtract polynomials. Love me some polynomials. It's going to be the next two sections here coming up. Uh, check out the picture. Don't be confused with polynomials with polynomials. Ooh, ouch, that's a little rough, a little rough. Uh, so let's talk polynomials. What are polynomials? Well, we're going to start off with a monomial. And what is a monomial? You're going to have to write some stuff down, so you may need some pause action here. We've got a lot of vocab coming at you, a lot of definitions. Uh, so a monomial is just a number, a variable, or product of uh, the two. So you can have a number. Let me write this down. So maybe you have the number 10. That is a monomial. You could have a variable. You may have x. Uh, you could have the product. That means multiply 2. You could have 10x. These are all monomials. Um, and then you can have some exponents. So maybe you have 10x to the fifth power. These are all monomials. They're just um, a number and a variable. If you have both, this number in front is called a coefficient. Hopefully you've seen that somewhere along the way. The coefficient is just the number in front of the variable. So this 10 would be a coefficient. There is a coefficient on every, every variable. X, would, it's not written. It would just be a plain old 1. So hopefully some uh, you've seen that one before. What is the degree of a monomial? So monomial is just one, one term, essentially. Uh, the degree would be the sum of the exponents. So sometimes, uh, let's take a look at a couple of different things. We could have, oh my gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> it's supposed to be a 5. 5x cubed, the degree of this would be 3. It would be a third degree. Uh, so it's when you add up the exponents, why do you have to add them up? Well, you could actually have something like this, 10x squared, y to the third. Uh, if you add those up, what do you get? You get a fifth degree poly, I'm sorry, monomial. So if you have two uh, variables, you add them together. We're going to deal mostly in one variable. One thing I forgot to mention here, it's whole number exponents. You can't have negative numbers. So if you had something like this, it's not going to be considered a monomial. Um, and we can talk about that later. Why? Um, and we're not going to have like fractions. You can't have 10x to the 3 halves. So you can't have uh, rational exponents either. They've got to be nice, friendly whole numbers to be a monomial. We define that first because really we're going to use that one to define what is a polynomial. So a polynomial here, let me pause it, jot this down, uh, is when you add, them, add monomials together. So we're going to add them together, and they look something like this. Jot that bad boy down. And uh, each monomial is called a term. So this thing has four terms. It's got the first term up front here, second term, third term, fourth term. So there's different terms. When we start to look at the degree of a polynomial, it's a little bit different. So I added all these terms. These are four different monomials here. Add them all together, get a polynomial. Poly just means many. And uh, the degree now turns into um, the greatest degree of any one term. So if I look at all those terms, I've got four terms to look at. What do you see here? Here's the biggest one right here. So this is a 1. It's not written. This is a 1. Actually, even constants, even numbers have variables like 7. It's really 7x to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So really, this, this term would have a degree of 0. This term has a degree of 1. This term has a degree of 2. This term has a degree of 4. So if we're talking about the degree, this one up here is a fourth degree polynomial. Four terms, fourth degree. Love it. Excellent. So that's a, a lot of information on what polynomials are. Uh, what are we going to do with these things? Well, we like them to look a certain way. So we have a standard form when we write these things. We like to write them so the highest exponents first, and then you just kind of decrease in value as you go from left to right. So, And that will be really important later on that we put these in standard form so that we can do stuff, simplify them, factor them, all these different things we want to do with them. So if I have to rewrite this in standard form, you'll notice in your notes that's blank. I want you to write that down. So I give you this polynomial. It's got three terms. Oops, I'm giving you an answer. Here we go. How many terms? It's got three terms. Can I go through there and find the highest power? Yeah, this is 0. This is 1. Remember, if it's not written, it's 1. And that's 2. So this is a second-degree polynomial. Standard form says put the biggest power first. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 3x. You don't have to write the 1. Plus the 4. Just make sure you keep the sign with it. That's a minus 3x, so it's a minus 3x. Awesome. Uh, pause it and try the next one real quick. All right, did you get this answer here? Hopefully you got it matches up there. Make sure you got the signs correct. That's a negative 4y or that minus 4y in there. Uh, and it's a fifth degree with four terms. Fantastic. 
Moving on, there's so there's certain polynomials that we use so often that they have their own special names. We've talked about monomials. Really, mono just means one. So this just means one. So it's one term. So that's when we looked at, you know, maybe it's 3x to the fifth. That is a monomial. What does bi mean? Like a bicycle? It means two. Uh, so it means two terms. Maybe you have 3x to the fifth plus seven. Maybe you have x minus four. These are binomials. This is a very common binomial here that we're going to refer to as binomial. Crazy, huh? And uh, go on a limb here. Maybe you know what a tricycle is. That's right, dog. It's three. So we got three terms here. So maybe you have four y to the fifth uh, plus three y squared plus two y. That is a trinomial. It's got three terms. So anything with three terms, trinomial. I imagine there's quad penta uh you know quadnomials we just don't they're not common uh so we don't have we don't really refer to them very often but don't freak out i guess if that ever came up uh so what are we gonna do with these things well the whole section is adding and subtracting them so we're gonna add them so what's nice about adding these things really we're just combining like terms is all we're doing so they're usually in parentheses you know so i have a binomial up here 9x plus 7 plus another binomial Basically, these parentheses don't matter. <laughs> is that great? When we're adding, it's not really doing anything. This is just still 9x plus 7 plus 4x minus 10. What you're really doing is distributing like a 1 here, that positive 1. But what happens when you multiply anything by 1? It just leaves it alone. If you really want to think about it here, there's a, a, a 1 out front. 1 times anything doesn't change it. So if you distribute it, why would I want to distribute it? Well, now I can move some things around here, a little uh, commutative property. Ooh, I love it. And now I can combine like terms and say, hey, 9x uh, plus 4x is 13x, and then 7 minus 10 is negative 3. Fantastic. So we are going to add polynomials. So if I get these things over here, all right, so I just go ahead and since it's addition here in the middle, I'm just going to rewrite these. So I'm going to write it all out. I like to write this bad boy all out and see all the steps here. So, um, the second parentheses, it's like distributing a 1 to all this if you want, but really you're just dropping the parentheses. If you times everything by 1, it stays the same. So I'm just going to rewrite it without parentheses. Once I do that, if you're comfortable adding like terms here, that's great. Um, but it's also nice to kind of uh, use that commutative property and put them together. So I got my cubes. There's my 3w cubed plus a w cubed. Put them together. Where are my squares at? Here's my squared. I got a minus 3w squared, so keep that sign in front. And I got a plus 5w squared. And then I've got my constant here, 7. Oh, I have a regular w by himself, so I'm, I like to go in order there. Keep him in that standard form if you keep counting down like that. So uh, that's okay if he's just by himself. And then we got our 7, plus 7, and our minus 4. So just be real careful. You're keeping those signs consistent. If it's a minus, keep that minus with it. Now they're all grouped together nice and neat. All I got to do is just combine like terms. So 3w squared, or I'm sorry, 3w cubed plus a w cubed. We've got 4w cubed minus 3w plus 5w squared. We got plus 2w squared. Uh, the plain old w by himself stays the same, plus 2w. And 7 minus 4 gives me that 3. So as long as you keep those signs there and are real careful with that, it should be good to go. Fantastic. What about subtraction? Come on down here. Let's take a, take a look at subtraction. Now these parentheses really do matter. The first one, not so much. You're still distributing that 1 out front here. So really, this is still... 12y plus 7. You can distribute that one. But here, it's a minus. You're distributing negative 1. So now it really matters. So you're distributing this negative 1 in front. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4y. Negative 1 times 5 is plus 5. So you're distributing the negative to each of these. It changes the sign. So important. Huge right there. Uh, now we'll go ahead and put them together. I got my 12y here minus my 4y. And then I've got my plus 7 and my plus 5. Let's combine like terms and wrap this bad boy up. 12y minus 4y is 8y, and 7 plus 5 is 12. Fantastic. Killing it. All right, so here we go. Let's wrap it up here. I got a trinomial minus a trinomial. So as soon as I see this, uh, oops, I know I'm going to distribute that negative. If you want to write negative 1 in there, you can. But really, you were distributing this negative to everybody. Everybody's getting subtracted. So again, write this out. Don't try to do that step in your head. It's just too easy to mess up a sign if you try to do all this in your head. So if I distribute the negative, this becomes minus 5a squared. A negative times that positive 2a, oops, I almost missed it, becomes minus 2a. And then a negative times a negative becomes plus 4. So you've got to change those signs. This step here is optional, but I really, really like it, so I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to put my a squareds together. Here they are. I'm going to put my a's together, minus 2a minus 2a. And then I'm going to put my numbers together, 7 and 4. So luckily, they all had a partner. But don't freak out if they don't have partners. Not a problem. Now let's combine these terms together. I've got 3 minus 5, so there it is. I've got negative 2a squared. Minus 2 minus 2 more is minus 4a. And if you have issues with your negatives, use a calculator. Type them in. Get those numbers right. Uh, and there it is. And if you notice, all of mine are in standard form. I want these bad boys in standard form. So if you're grouping them, just put the highest powers first and then work your way down. So they look nice and pretty. They're all in standard form. They are good to go. That is it. This can be tricky, though. Um, make sure that you are taking your time practicing these. Um, what I want to do, ah, let's do one more together, and then we'll cut you loose. Uh, the reason I want to do this one together, first you get it right now, because I don't think I put in your notes. But um, it's subtraction. I just put a 3 here. So sometimes you have to distribute first. So we were doing it anyway. We were just doing um, what well, we were distributing that 1. Now we're going to distribute this minus 3 here. So minus 3 times that 4 is minus 12. A negative times a negative is a positive. So again, just be very careful with the signs. That's the only thing that's trip you up is those signs. So now I'm going to put my x's together, put my numbers together, and then combine those bad boys. What are we going to get here? 5 uh, minus 12 is minus 7, and then 7 and 30 is 37. Okay, enough of me talking. I would like you to pause it, try these. Whoa, whoa, what was that? <laughs> try these three guys out over here. See how uh, they go for you. All right, here's some answers here. So I went step by step and changed the color as I went. So first, double check the answers. If you got 3b squared minus 6b minus 11, you're good to go. So check your answers. If you, they don't match mine, then go through and see, oh, man, what happened? Where'd you make a mistake? Look for something in there. Um, this second one's interesting because not a lot of things added together, but that's fine. You can have big, long, nasty answers. No worries here. And that's it. Uh, take your time with the practice. If it's not enough, go ahead and do that corrective assignment for extra practice. And good luck on the match check. Peace out.